Welcome to a world where you can learn about real life in a setting that is alive and growing just like you are. From everyday people who may never have teaching certificates, but all have something valuable to offer. In a place where everyone is a student and everyone is a teacher. This is the One Room Schoolhouse. Good morning, friends! Good morning! Since you guys started music first thing this morning, I thought I would just sit back and relax. You guys like music class, don't you? I, I love that you guys love it. We've been getting serenaded all morning long. It means, Miss Robin, that they, they're, they're listening, aren't they? I like it. They love, they love that song. You guys sing that song on the playground all over the place, don't you? You just bust yeah, out and singing? Sing it on the bus. I, you did sing it on the bus. Yes, Jalen. Why is my hair different? Think, man, that's going to win you some big brownie points when you get older. Listen, when you get a girl, you always want to notice when they get their hair done. Nice. I'm trying to go back natural. <clears throat> okay, I'm trying to go back a little bit more natural. Let the grays kind of grow in and let myself age as I age. What do you think? Alrighty, good morning, friends at home. Welcome back. I hope you guys are joining us for music today. They have been singing. They are ready. You guys want to wave to your friends at home? Wave over here. Say good morning. Good morning. Since you guys... Buenos dias. And? I love it. And bonjour. Buenos dias, amigos. Vamos a cantar hoy. We are going to do some singing today, okay? So, you guys are ready. You've already started a music class. Let's go ahead and do... I wonder if anyone has ever sung the Pledge of Allegiance in, in song. You, might want, you, guys, you guys are good. You can work on that. You can work on that. But for now, but for now, let's go ahead and stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone face the flag. Hand over heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. I did do it. I was right beside you, dude. I found me a little tail. I like it. I like it. Let's see. Who haven't I called on in a while? Who? Are you going to do it? What up? Oh, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hazel, come on up. Okay, everyone get ready for your prayer. Okay, close your eyes. Dear God, thank you for a wonderful day and thank you for Mom and Dad. Thank you for this good day. Thank you for this music class. Thank you. Pray, amen. Amen. Woo. I like it. She's ready. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready? Yeah. No, no, you're not. Go home, Miss Robin. They're not ready. Very nice. Take it away. You guys are ready. Tell, let's all tell Miss Rebecca how much we love her. Oh. <laughs> Miss Rebecca is a beautiful woman, isn't she? And you are so blessed to have her in your life. So, how is everybody today? Well, I'm going to ask Mr. Joshua to come right on up because he's going to help us lead this morning because Mrs. Sydney is a little bit not feeling well. And so she is going to take one more day to recuperate. And so Mr. Joshua, he's going to tell y'all a little bit later about something called the Great American Songbook. And he's going to sing a couple of songs from that. So you are going to be so happy that you got to hear this man sing. Sometimes God just does something that you feel like is a little bit unfair. You know, there will be millions of people born that can sing, eh, eh, 
And then he'll say, how about you be the one? I'm going to give it all to you. And that's what he did. <laughs> but anyway, you're going to really enjoy that. So we are going to do, first of all, a really old song. That's just fun. And um, I'm going to need one person to come up and help me with it. But I, it needs to be a person with a really loud voice. <laughs> Henry, you look like you have a very loud voice going this morning. All right. Good. So here's the way. What what did you say, Henry? I speak hawk. 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 hawk? What? <laughs> Whoa! That it is like hawk. They all heard that? me. Yeah. yeah. What? I, we always love in you the little in the little movie about the fish. What's that called? Oh, uh, Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. You know how she says, "I can speak whale." Well, oh, yeah. I got that. Yes. So, that's an incredible hawk. I've never known a person that could speak hawk. All right. So, what we're going to do is this is a little song that goes like this. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And you get to be our where? Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Okay? Can you do it? All right, so we're. I want you to get right close to this mic. Okay, you ready? Okay, you so that right they can hear you mic. say where on the cameras. Okay, everybody ready? Y'all stand up. We're going to do I've got the joy in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a tack. Ouch! <laughs> All right, everybody ready? Stand up. Stand up, Miss Autumn. Ooh, Push your yeah. bench in. Everybody ready? Here we go, Mr. Wolliver. Joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to sing. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I don't 
start doing every week something called a round because a round is a good precursor to learning to sing in harmony. So we will learn three blind mice and row, row, row your boat. But today we're going to do something a little more gentle just to kind of breathe. Okay? And it, it goes like this. Mr. Wolliver. Ready? Y'all want to sing it with me? Praise the Lord together singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. That's all there is to it. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Can we do it again? Praise the Lord together singing Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Again, praise the Lord together singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I'll get your questions after we're through with the song. So, the very first part of it, praise the Lord together singing is the same note isn't it say it sing it with me you ready praise the lord together singing now it moves alleluia now back up one note alleluia back up one note Alleluia. So it's like you were at the top of the stairs and you go, Alleluia. You step down and then you step back up one step. Alleluia. Now you step back up another step. Alleluia. Let's do it one more time. Ready? And this time let's Let's not sing with harsh, harsh loudness, but let's sing very full, as if we were giving all of our breath to the Lord. Okay, here we go. Praise the Lord together singing, Alleluia. Up. Alleluia. Up. And so, Mr. Josh, you want to start it, and I'll be in, in the middle, and then Miss Gretchen will be. So you, all of you, sing with Miss Robin. All of you sing with Mr. Josh, and all of you sing We're with Miss Gretchen. Okay, you'll sing an octave up from Josh. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Praise the Lord together, singing Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Okay, how many of you have ever been to a baseball game? Oh. I, I have been play, I played baseball. You have? How many of you have played baseball? No. Not me. Not many of you? Well, we have to have a baseball game sometime. We can have the boys against the girls. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think would win? The boys. The boys? Are you sure? That boy. Boys are boy. You do. That's fun, isn't it? Is everybody too loud for you, Miss Cindy? All right. All right. We'll do that someday. But did y'all know there is a song that was written like a hundred and how many hundred and twenty years ago? that has become our national anthem of baseball. Did you know that? And it was written in a place that I want to tell you a little bit about, and then Mr. Josh is going to take it and tell you a little bit more about it. But once upon a time, at the turn of the last century, in New York City, have any of you ever been in New York City in Manhattan? Mm-hmm. No? I haven't. Have you been there, Indiana? Yeah, you have. Well, I have. It's a very busy yeah, place, even though I hear it's a ghost town now. Ah, yes. So you see, yes, Aiden. Uh huh. I see. All right. Well, those songs kind of make the rounds and begin to morph. But everybody turn around and look at Miss Robin because I want to tell you about something. Because there's this, there's this little finger strip of land that sticks off the state of New York. And it is called Manhattan, New York. Right? And Manhattan, New York is a very populated place. There are, there are people wedged into houses that their whole house is no bigger than this schoolhouse because land in Manhattan is so expensive and everybody wants to live in Manhattan, kind of, but not really. And in the beginning of the last century, there was something, yes, Henry? Huh? Oh, we're home alone list. It's like they're in New York. Locks in New York. Yeah. That is exactly. Yes, Henry. It's, it's especially funny when when the water dude goes black through the screen. <laughs> like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So Henry, I just think you are going to have to have your papa write a song about the hawk where you can sing yeah. the part of the hawk. I'm, I'm going to think about that all day long. That was exceptional. No, wait, we can't do the hawk in, in this time. Y'all listen to me. Because in Manhattan at the turn of the last century, there, were, there was this place where building after building, side by side, they had vaudeville shows going. You know what vaudeville shows are? They're kind of comedy shows and they have step kick songs and it's all very raucous and frisky, you know. They, and those were going on. And then in between those, they had places, Aiden, everybody look up at me. They had places where composers would be playing the piano, putting together a new song. And they had lyricists that were there writing lyrics and people putting music. And then they had song pluggers. And that's people that worked for the publishers and they would take a, a song and they'd take it to that vaudeville show and say, would you sing this song? And, and you, great singer, would you sing this song? And that's how America got its music. The, they would typeset the songs and sell them in sheet music. Someday, when I can dig it out of storage, I'll bring you some copies of the sheet music. Everybody look at me. So you had this whole row uh, and this whole place in Manhattan that was just full of people writing 
songs, and it became known as Tin Pan Alley. Mr. Wolliver, do you think you could kind of show us a little bit about what that piano part might have felt like or sounded like in Tin Pan Alley? Uh-huh. And you can imagine if that was being played, play row after row, they were playing songs like that and the next building was playing a different song and then the next play building was playing a different song and then the next building maybe was a vaudeville show that was playing a different song and so if you stood in the street it was just this wild cacophony of sound and they called it it was like people banging on tin pans tin pan alley and we got a lot of our greatest songs from that time. It's really a wonderful time in American music. I've always thought it'd be fun to have a Tin Pan Alley. I was wondering if we could maybe make a Tin Pan Alley here this morning and see how it would feel to all sing a different song at the same time. <laughs> Do you want to try it? It's yeah. not like a round, like we were just singing a round where everybody is, your voices fit together. But in this, it's like there's a wall here and you don't know what they're singing and there's a wall here and they don't know what you're singing. So this group is going to sing, I've got the joy, joy, joy in my heart. This group is going to sing This Little Light of Mine. And this group is going to sing, or why don't you sing This Little Light of Mine? And we'll sing uh, Ha La 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 No, you get, what are you doing, This Little Light of Mine? No, you're This Little Light of Mine. Which, which one are y'all? Joy. Y'all joy. are Joy, right. Joy, okay. Joy. We can do that. I've got the Joy, Joy, Joy. Scratch your friend's back, scratch your back. Now you have to concentrate, right? Because it's not going to sound good. Okay, you're but ready. We'll see you how it in, okay? We'll see how it sounded in the streets of Tin Pan Alley. Are you ready? Come on. Everybody ready? ready? Just now ready. let's see if we can hold you're our ready? own. Okay. Hey, Joshua, you and Lulu come up. Come up, Hazel. So let's get right here. Y'all want to do that, Joshua? You go to the back. And y'all gather, no, Josh, oh, not that Joshua, this is me, Joshua. Okay. Oh, I'm going to be right Joshua. here, y'all ready? You're Autumn, Autumh, 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 come on, down. Hazel, come on. Yeah. Autumn, okay. sit down, Autumn. Ma Autumh, Mackenzie right and Piper, y'all get up and go to the back. Right so, oh, okay. so, yeah, right, so we're going to. stay with me? All right. Come on, so, And I think, Aunt Gretchen, I think y'all should go to the back so that we're staggered. Oh, okay. All right, come on, y'all, over here. Okay. Everybody ready? So, y'all gather right here with me. That's our note. Everybody gonna be ready. You be might ready. have to plug your ears. Okay. Come on. Are y'all ready? All right. One, two, ready, go. and they were clunky and strident. Rawr, rawr, rawr. So I, I, if I could go back in time, Tin Pan Alley is one of the places I would go. So there's coming a time when you can go to Manhattan and see it all because they're trying oh. to resurrect it. Um, so 
There was a famous song that was written in Tin Pan Alley that has become the national anthem of baseball. And it goes like this, so us three can sing it. Do you know it all the way through? I think so. Uh, get ready, listen to us sing it, and then you're gonna sing it with us. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back here. We'll root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's one, two, three, stretch your out at the old ball game. It's root, 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 and root, it's, root, root for the home team. But is, is it and it's, so it's? Oh, I think it's, I don't know. I think it's so it's. And, and it's, will. I think and it's and will root. And will root. And will root. Yeah. Okay. Y'all okay. ready? Here so we when, when we get, when we get, to, and it's one. Let's yell that and not sing it. And right. it's one, one two, two, three. Strikes you're out at the old ball game. Y'all stand up. at this song and this song is in a meter this song is in a meter called six eight so it has macro beats and micro beats can y'all say that macro, macro beat beats and, and micro beat what do y'all think a macro beat is Jalen what do you think a macro beat is Magnolia can you help him if something is micro, what is it? Like a microorganism. You look at it through a microscope. It and, means and, it, and it's, so tiny you can't it's a tiny it. beat. Right. But what is a macroorganism? Big one. Big one. Caleb, you have such good deductive reasoning. Very good. So if macro this one beats. is in 6A, like this, what does this 6 mean? Who knows? Microscope. What? Huh? Microscope. <laughs> No, what does the six mean in music? Yes, Indiana? Six beats per measure? Yes, that's what it means. Six beats in a measure. Uh -huh. So if we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, whoops, six, and then we have our measure line, right? So it means that some of these beats are more important than others. Ezekiel, some of these beats are more important than others. Which ones do you think would be the most important beats? Which one? No. Who knows which? Uh-huh. Aiden? Do you know? Uh huh. Well, that is in this, but in a normal song, it would continue on, right? It would keep going. But let's let's think about this. Spoke it out. Uh huh. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Which one? Which one sounds the most important? Four, five, what do you think? Six, one, Aubrey? two, three, four, five, six. Huh? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, yeah, two, Mackenzie? Three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Four is one of them, isn't it? Good. What's the other one? one? Two, three, four, five, six. One. Magnolia? Uh -huh. Yes. Good job. So we could write it like this. One. Let's make let's do it this way. So it looks like a one. 
two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Talking, That's more sophisticated <laughs> rhythms. So everybody, do you remember when we talked about the anacrusis and the cruces? Do y'all remember that? So the anacrusis is the six, right? Because it's leading to the crucis, which is the downbeat of the measure. So this is the upbeat, this is the downbeat. So let's do the anacrusis. Six, one. Six, one. Now, when you conduct a piece that's in six, eight like this, you really don't give us all of these little internal notes most of the time. Sometimes you will. But that would be to go like this. Watch me. You would conduct like this. If you were doing all six, you would go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. See, it's a little bit busy, isn't it? So in this one, you just do the... And take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Down, Buy me some peanuts up, and down. Aubrey, don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Who wants to come up and help us? Mackenzie, you come up. Here comes Mackenzie, a bright young woman. That is one thing's for sure. Now, so Miss Mackenzie, you're going to help us feel the Anacrusis and the cruises. Okay, everybody ready? Here we go. Stand up and get ready to sing to Miss McKenzie. Conduct them. Get your arms up. Get ready, McKenzie. So you're gonna go. Take me out to the ball. are more important than other beats. And what are they called? The big beats. What are they called? Big beats. Big beats. Mac macro beats. beats. Have y'all ever seen a Mac truck? Mac. A Mac truck is a big truck, right? And a macro beat is a big beat. And a micro beat is a little beat. Okay? Like a micro. Yes. Now, so you've heard about Tin Pan Alley and you've played around with what that concept is and what it might have sounded like, but out of Tin Pan Alley came one of the most wonderful heritages that, if that's a word, that the United States has, right? The United States has incredible songwriters and music that the whole rest of the world looks at and admires. And today, we have a person that is literally a walking encyclopedia of the great American songbook and Broadway and all the things that happen with that. But he's also one of the greatest tenors on the earth today, just a wonderful singer. And there is a competition called the, uh, what's it called? The American, American Traditions. American right. Traditions Vocal Competition. That, ha that the winner gets a good pot of money. So there, is a, there are a lot of people from around the United States that enter into it. And Mr. Joshua Carswell won that competition. And so um, I thought he would be very blessed to come today and share with you about the Great American Songbook and to sing a couple of things from it. Are y'all ready for that? Yes. Okay. 
clap for Mr. Joshua. Well, thank you very much. So, like Miss Robin was saying, a lot of these songs uh, that we call the Great American Songbook kind of started in the late 1800s and at uh, the beginning of the 20th century. So it was people like on Tin Pan Alley, you've got um, some songwriters. There was a songwriting team called the Gershwin Brothers, George and Ira Gershwin. Uh, there was a man named Irving Berlin and Cole Porter. And there are a lot of these songwriters and that most all of them were up writing in New York in that Tin Pan Alley area. And as they continued to write, they started developing relationships with each other and they would collaborate on different songs. And then those songs were turned into maybe songs that you hear on the radio later on or things that you would hear like in a Broadway show. Has anyone ever seen a, a musical or a Broadway show where you see it and you watch it and they're singing and acting and dancing all in it at the same time? Have y'all seen it? Has anybody ever been in a musical? Have y'all ever done that? A performance like that? So, okay, a few of you have, good. So those were, those were shows that incorporated singing and acting and dancing all together. And a lot of the writers of these songs were people that started in that area. And then they went to Hollywood and they wrote a lot of songs for movies and musicals, like when you think of like Disney movies today, right? You've got a lot of, yes. So you've got a lot of those movies and then someone will break out into a song. So you had all of these songwriters starting out at the beginning of the 20th century. And it's kind of what we call the Great American Songbook. Now the Great American Songbook isn't something that was only then, it's something that we still have today but it's songs that last a long, 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 long time. So for instance, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. That would be in the Great American Songbook because that song was written over a hundred years ago. How many of us in here are older than a hundred? Is anybody older than a hundred? You're older than a hundred? Even our grandparents are not older than a hundred. So these are songs that have lasted a long, 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 long time, and we're still here today singing them. So that's what we would call something that's in the Great American Songbook. But it was developed in a time where, remember when Mr. James was in your class a few weeks ago? And he was playing a lot of those chords, and there were just a bunch of chords on that guitar, right? It wasn't real, just kind of simple, but it was a lot, right? So it was at a time when jazz music was the popular music. And that was another thing I wanted to mention to you. Do y'all know what pop music is? Do you know what pop is short for? What do you think? It's sort, of short for jazz. sort of, pop is short for popular. So at that time, pop music was music that was popular. So for a long time, these jazz songs were the pop songs. They were the popular songs. And then in the 50s, we had a new genre of music called rock and roll, right? Y'all have heard of that? Like Elvis Presley? And that became the popular music. And that had a lot of guitars and it was real guitar based. Whereas these songs were piano based mostly. They were written on the piano. That's why they've got all the beautiful chords and harmonies. Now at Tin Pan Alley, a lot of times people would collaborate on their songs and there would be a composer and a lyricist. So what is a composer? What does a composer do? They write, they write what? The tunes? Yeah, they write. So a composer writes the melody. And what is a lyricist? What does a lyricist do? Maybe like the words, right? Like the words. Mm -hmm. So the words. So a lyricist writes what? Words. words. And a composer writes music. music. So when you put them together, you have a song. And there are a lot of songwriting teams. Like for instance, do you know, one of the most popular songs from the Great American Songbook. Do you know the song Over the Rainbow? Have y'all ever heard that song? So 
One person wrote this. One person wrote da. So one person wrote the melody and they did da 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 da. Right? The melody. And then another person wrote somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. And when you put it together, it's somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. Hey, and we've got our song. Can I, can I ask you, because for, for time, mm -hmm. I want to be sure they hear you sing. Yes. So sing and then let's continue this okay. in between the songs. Okay, so you had these songwriting teams and they would write songs together. So these next two songs were written by some songwriting teams. A lot of these people were based in New York, but one of the lyricists who is a person who does what? Writes the lyrics. Writes the lyrics, right? The words. He was from down south, and there weren't a lot of southern writers in these songs, and his name was Johnny Mercer. And he wrote a lot of, he wrote hundreds and hundreds of famous songs. And so this is one of his songs, and he loved words. Sometimes he would even make up words that weren't even real words, and he would put them in a song. So this is one of those songs called Too Marvelous for Words. So it's talking about how I don't even have the words to say how much he loves this person he's singing to. Okay, so here we go. Get ready for the song. I search for phrases to sing your praises but there aren't any magic adjectives to tell you all you are you're just too marvelous too marvelous for words like glorious glamorous and that old standby amorous it's all too wonderful, I'll never find the words to say enough, tell enough. I mean, they just aren't swell enough. You're much too much and just too very, very to ever be in Webster's Dictionary. And so I'm borrowing a love song from the birds to tell you that you're marvelous too marvelous for words like adorable and amorous and glorious and glamorous they're insufficient when applied to you to be euphemistical to be eulogistical i have to come up with a million words i never thought i knew i try to be logical and sensible but i'm incomprehensible whenever i begin to find a phrase for they never say enough they never tell enough. I already told you no vocabulary swell enough. What do I do to say the things I have in mind? It's really absurd there isn't a word to fit you. No matter where I look, I always seem to find delectable, delirious, magnificently mysterious. You're simply too spectacular to be in my vernacular. And so you see, I'm forced to go to the birds. The reason must be quite apparent that you are just too utterly, utterly wonderful and marvelous for words. And so I'm borrowing a love song from the birds to tell you you're colossal. You made my whole life possible and too marvelous for words. Woo! That's a lot of words, right? Imagine putting all those words in one song. And we have one more for you. So that song was a fast song, kind of a swing, a swing song, right? And the real fast part in the middle, you call that a patter, a patter song. Everybody say, a patter song. A patter song. So that's where we go really fast and kind of dance around. Hold on one minute, we're gonna sing one more song and then I'll answer your question, okay? So, yes. Before you start this song, can we say bye to our friends at home? Goodbye, Friends everyone. at home, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I wish you could stay longer because this is amazing, but we're gonna keep listening to him sing his beautiful songs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so our next song was written, also the words were written by Johnny Mercer. The 
These are challenging times for children and for parents everywhere. Remember that school doesn't just have to be in a building with teachers and desks. School can and should happen everywhere. This program is made possible thanks to the generous support from the Dottie Frist Foundation, the Happy Davis Foundation, Heart Utilities, and viewers like you.